So two ways we can uh, tackle global poverty. First is the volume. Many of the countries need uh, enormous uh, financial resources and we were able to jack up the uh, IDA resources by 50%. So this could make from a volume perspective already a difference in all the IDA eligible countries and that are 77. The second dimension is where poverty is most dramatic and that is in the fragile states. That number is about 30 countries that are in, uh, in dire need of, of support. And we were pleased that we can double our resource allocation to those countries. So that will make a, a real difference. I think this is an enormous opportunity to deliver on the commitments that the world made on through the sustainable development goals, including really important commitments to the world's children. You know, the commitments to end avoidable child deaths, to get every child not just in school, but learning to ensure that every child is uh, living uh, out of poverty, has access to clean water and sanitation. We currently are a long way off track on almost each of those goals. I think IDA 18 is an opportunity to get us back on track, not just because it provides more resources, but it provides opportunities to leverage additional resources so that for every one dollar that goes in, three dollars can come out in investments that can make a difference. There are so many innovations in IDA 18 to we got a AAA rating and can access capital markets. And it's on the basis of that innovation, along with the very strong continued support from our donors, that we've been able to have such a large replenishment. We're going to double the support to fragile and conflict-affected states. So we want to really be able to make progress in those um, economies. I think from our perspective as borrower representatives, one of the things that we are pushing was for jobs and economic transformation. Because what we have observed over the years is that the countries who have made progress in reducing poverty are those which are growing and creating jobs. So we felt that it was important that to have that is one of the themes under IDA 18. We urgently need to find ways of reducing the risks that are facing people in areas affected by drought and flood and natural disasters such as the food emergencies we now see going on in Africa. But not, not just responding to the immediate needs, you know, the children who need to be kept alive. And I think through the crisis window, we have an opportunity to build that bridge from humanitarian intervention to long-term investments in resilience that can really make a difference. We have uh, about 65 million people displaced. That's a record. And often they are living in neighboring countries. So the challenge is not only to give them food and shelter, but to help them in terms of jobs uh, and have a integrate into uh, the societies uh, where they live. Well, you make possible uh, investments that today are deterred because of a uh, high risk as perceived by the private sector. Uh, so this window will allow to share some of these risks with uh, IDA, creating new opportunities for good projects, uh, but at a level of risk that the private sector can uh, handle. And uh, this will, of course, help create jobs in every sector, agriculture, especially infrastructure. The private uh, sector window uh, really is a very, very important new addition to financing development on the African continent. We have always indicated that uh, the government, sub government investment alone is not sufficient. We need the private sector to do more of the investment so that we can consistently grow our economies and sustain the development that we need. I think uh, at the end of the day it's about um, growing the pie and sharing the benefits. The new tool, the window um, of IDA for the private sector, is really need to pay attention on bringing us into the value chain. That's very important because as business as usual cannot be possible, the financial tools need to be adapted and it's already good that, uh, those pe they, that they start talking to each other. We're facing so much uncertainty in the global environment at the moment. The economic headwinds are strong. We see so many challenges from climate change to fragility and conflict 
to massive movements of people, more refugees in the world than since World War II. The world is interconnected in many ways and together the global community by putting this vote of confidence to fund IDA in this manner can really make a difference and that's why we need to do this. We can make a difference for poor people in the world. Thank you.